Hi, before we go more deep into this video, I'd like to say that I have opened up a Patreon for my ASMR. I've had it for a while for my music channel, but I've been so busy that I haven't been able to do music that much lately. But I feel like I have more time to do ASMR and also it's uh, in a way faster to do this, believe it or not. I've been so drawn out emotionally and physically that it's sometimes harder to do music in those situations. But now my Patreon is open for both music and ASMR content. You don't have to do anything, but if you want to, you can give me a dollar or two and in return you will get uh, all my uh, videos that I will publish in mp3 forms and we can think about more uh, perks in the future and especially if you want to give more I can do some exclusive stuff personally too but like I said you don't have to do anything I'm just grateful for you watching my video here but please enjoy this one hi it's Mono a small request here and today I wanted to share some of my favorite TV shows with you guys I made a list which is here so we can keep on track what have I said and what I have forgotten and I'm sure there are multiple multiple shows that I have actually loved but I just forgot to add into the list but here are some that are at least worth mentioning some are older some are newer and I like all kinds of stuff so you may even find something new to look from this one I hope at least and at the same time I want to give you some close-up talking for both ears and I hope that my microphone setup is good enough for this video at least the levels look nice but let's get right into it okay the first one on my list is a little bit of an oddball show from the UK it's called The Mighty Bush it stars Noel Fielding and uh, Julian Barat, I think it is called. And they do all kind of weird stuff in it. Noel and Julian play these zookeepers that end up in various very weird uh, trips and adventures. There's a lot of music in the show and also elements that I'm sure some potheads at least would find amusing like a infamous Ice Snow Nowhere to Go song in the tundra or a mirror guy in the mirror hall who has these dangling mirror balls and he just keeps saying look at them shine look at them shine Look at them shine. <laughs> Sometimes the show is a little bit too silly or weird, but most of the time it's at least an enjoyable experience. And I still like to think about it time to time. I'm not sure if I'm ready to watch it again, but I highly recommend it for everyone who at least knows Noel Fielding. And it also stars in some cameos. Uh, more famous people like Russell Brand or Richard Ayoade oh, and Richard Ayoade is actually one of my favorites okay what else do we have in the list a classic The Office both UK and US first I saw the UK version because it showed here in the it aired here in the Finland the UK version is, well, everyone knows Ricky Charles' style. He likes to 
um, kind of like a make a fool out of himself and just make comedy out of embarrassment. It's a very good show with a big heart in the end. The US version is more American but it's also very enjoyable and I just love Steve Carroll and his characters in any movie he plays. He's, um, I think he's a very talented comedian in a way like Peter Sellers was that he doesn't need to make weird jokes or or stuff but there's uh, like a humane depth in his characters in a very odd way it's something in the eyes I think I've never understood Will Ferrell for example myself never laughed at his jokes or find found him funny but apples and oranges <laughs> also about the American office I'm pretty sure that it goes on a little bit too long I haven't even seen the last season because to me the magic kind of like vanished when Steve Carroll left the show even though characters like Dwight are very funny uh, in their own rights too. Dwight is also one of my favorite characters from uh, TV shows overall. Just too funny and very good writing. Okay, so the next one on the list is a newer show, House of Cards. I haven't seen the final I don't know if it's final but the previous season but I've seen all the three seasons before that this show is kind of like a culmination of good screenwriting everything is so mature thought out and realistic that it just makes you watch about politics and be in wonder and awe and amazement at the same time and also afraid terrified just seeing what a man can do I think that the characters are well thought out Kevin Spacey is a brilliant actor mm, and also not to mention Robin Wright she is fantastic as the first lady and also the show's episodes that she has directed are easily the best ones in the show to me because they are so full of symbolism in just the way that the camera moves and also where characters are in the scene what are shown and how it is shown I think Robin Wright has a very good eye for these kind of things. And this one is also a new show that I find highly, highly amusing and entertaining. It's called Silicon Valley. It's uh, HBO's show about San Francisco's Silicon Valley, the place for all startups and IT and everything crazy that happens there it's a funny show because it shows a new generation of IT people who are well I think they still have some uh, kind of like a well, stereotypes but they are also stereotypes for a reason about nerds and stuff but it also shows that they can be more than just these computer guys and how um, opportunistic the lifestyle is in Silicon Valley it's fun it's sometimes embarrassing and also chaotic kind of like a watching a tragic comedy just everything falls apart and sometimes things fall into places but mostly the things just fall apart And then one of Netflix's own shows. Uh, I was first 
not impressed by Better Call Saul but eventually maybe after four episodes I got so into the show and right now I feel like it's one of the best shows that have been made in my opinion and also in my opinion it's better than Breaking Bad this is uh, I believe it's an unpopular opinion but to me the pacing is brilliant and the screenwriting everything takes its time and gives time for the viewer to immerse into the world much better than Breaking Bad did Breaking Bad was fantastic in its own regard and in different ways but this is a whole different story and I'm not saying that Breaking Bad was bad at all I, I would say it's it's easily in there like the top 10 shows of all time but for some reason Better Call Saul flows better for me it has that just the overall feel of it and maybe because it's all these happenings before Breaking Bad it makes you excited about all these little things because the viewer knows all the references that are in the Breaking Bad and they are just wondering in their mind like what is going on why and how did all this happen and they are just waiting and waiting for some kind of like a bridge the last bridge for the Breaking Bad I'm very excited to see where they go with it and I think it's Get, uh, it's gotten better with every season and the last season was so good I'm so sad that it's already over and I want to know what happens next okay now we move on to slightly different stuff um, okay it seems that next ones are mostly about British shows so be prepared <laughs> okay the first one I want to talk about is Christopher Morris's Jam I believe it's from the 90s maybe 97 or something and a Finnish show Ihme Pandu was based on this one and the Jam is a comedy sketch show that is very absurd and to me, I would say that Jam is for TV, what Apex Twin was for music. It's groundbreaking, it's odd, but you just love it at the same time. For all the Finnish viewers, I highly recommend Ihme Panto too, and I hope that they at some point could translate it for American and other foreign countries too, because it's it's a it's one of the better Finnish productions there is for sure. Okay, and after Jam, um, well. This one is called Black Adder. I'm sure many of you are familiar with it. Black Adder stars an all star cast. It's got Hugh Laurie, Stephen Fry, and then Tony Robinson, and most importantly, Black Adder himself, Rowan Atkinson, who is more well remembered as the Mr. Bean. That's the name. Black Adder has four seasons and each season is based on a different time period. The first one is in the Middle Ages, the second one was in the... I think that was the... that was the Queen Elizabeth II's time. And then the third season is Renaissance with Hugh Laurie's character as the prince. And the fourth season is in the 
First or Second World War, I don't remember, but that one is just in the barracks. My favorite season of those is probably either the third or the fourth season. The first one is odd because they didn't really know yet what they were doing, or they did know what they were doing, but it wasn't as funny. So they changed it up a bit for the second season, and Rowan Atkinson's character Black Adder grew to be much more sarcastic and this know-it-all type of guy. And it's such a funny mixture of historical pieces and set pieces, and then these characters who talk like this, almost like a Tory parliament member, who is just spewing over the uh, bad royalty in a very English way. Some of Rowan Atkinson's writing is so funny, or I think actually that the show is written by Richard Curtis, but I believe that Rowan Atkinson has his own touch to the character as well. Baldrick is a lovely, lovely character, uh, who likes turnips and uh, is a bad chef and uh, Black Adder likes to make fun of Baldrick all the time and then Hugh Laurie's character is usually pretty dumb but also lovable like Baldrick is and then Stephen Fry's character is this uh, more like a majestic figure because his voice is so deep but uh, he's very funny in this one too. Okay, after Black Adder, we move on to another show, but with same actors, at least two of them, Hugh Laurie and Stephen Fry. They also, worth mentioning, have a very funny and also in some ways groundbreaking show called um, A Bit of Fry and Laurie. But uh, more better one is Jeeves and Wooster, which is, to me, when I just think about it, it reminds me of those teenage years when I was watching it. And I, I felt so warm and safe watching it, because these characters, they're so endearing. And they are like in their 1920s, 1930s England and also in America in one season. They just do funny stuff. Hugh Laurie is great at playing a, kind of like a lazy aristocrat member. <laughs> and then Jeeves was played by Stephen Fry. He's like a know-it-all butler. A butler who can really do anything. And uh, kind of like a superman of a butler and just trying to keep everything in place where Hugh Laurie's character Rooster is a little bit of a rascal but the music is great characters are so funny and the writing is super funny it's based on BG Woodhouse's books so we can thank Woodhouse of the show Okay, another pretty show, Peep Show. Peep Show stars David Mitchell and Richard Webb. I'm not sure about his name, but I think that is it. It's a first person comedy show. The characters are filming the show with helmets, which is very funny, but it just looks like that the camera is actually the person. It's a very weird and interesting way to show it and it also gives a whole new angle to these shows and to a show that is full of embarrassing bits and very funny writing. UK people are usually to me better with comedy shows but they also have their misses and sometimes the jokes go on too long but that's why I like David Mitchell 
and Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie because they have that comedic timing way better than some actors and uh, showmakers. I think David Mitchell's uh, David Mitchell's humor is kind of self-deprecating but also intellectual which I like in a way and it shows how humane these people are as well okay and then on to a Danish comedy show called Clone K-L-O-V-N it stars Frank Huam and Kasper Christensen it's a uh, I think it's a good I think it's a predecessor to the office actually. I'm pretty sure it started earlier, but it's a very silly show where the characters end up in super awkward situations. This brings the sympathy for the viewers because you just you can't but feel bad for the characters. They also made a movie called clone the movie and uh, it's a very very funny show it feels kind of like those office specials that are longer but I highly recommend watching it I actually just found out that they made another film and uh, I'm planning to watch it soon it was called clown forever it's basically a guy making a clown out of himself over and over again and somehow it just is funny most of the time I totally realize if some people don't like these type of shows but I love it I don't like to watch them all the time but most of the time I find them very enjoyable And then on to American comedy show. There's a lot of comedy here. I watch other stuff too, but when I was thinking about my favorites, somehow they just ended up being comedies, most of them. So this one is called Arrested Development. And I'm sure many of you know the show. It's very funny. It's got uh, amazing, superb writing uh, amazing cast you can see you know, like Lucille who is now more famous in the Archer oh I forgot Archer Archer is very funny too but I haven't seen the pre and uh, the latest season but anyway Arrested Development stars Tony Hale, Portia de Rossi uh, Will Arnett Michael Cera, this was the starting point for Michael Cera, and this was the starting point for the character Michael Cera. He's always the same one, <laughs> but he's so good at it too. Oh, and also Jason Bateman. Um, <laughs> uh, Arrested Development has so many jokes, running jokes uh, running throughout the seasons and also jokes running throughout the uh, episode you are watching and it's so coherent everything falls into place there are some nudges and references to upcoming and previous episodes and seasons so many jokes, inside jokes and these things that you just uh, learn to fall in love with. My favorite parts about Arrested Development is the Tobias Funke character who is so gay without realizing it himself and how he is like an analyst and therapist and short, short of that is called an therapist. <laughs> then I like the doctor who is always 
like a double entendre, uh, giving, uh, for example, saying that, oh, the patient is all right, when in reality, the patient had lost the left arm, so now he's all right, and stupid stuff like that. And then I like uh, Michael Serres and his cousin's love story. It's so awkward. Charlize Theron's character. Uh, so many to choose from. Job's illusions. And Tony Hale's character, Buster, which is so, so funny. Everything that Buster says and does is is very enjoyable to watch. <laughs> but it's a show about the family who is kind of like falling apart and just trying to manage. They're rich, entitled and very stupid. And that's why it's okay and fun to laugh at them, I guess. <laughs> Okay, what else do I have here? Oh, an animated show. Um, there's so many animated shows that I've liked. When I was a kid, I liked SpongeBob. Then I liked Adventure Time. Uh, and Pokemon, of course. But uh, one of the newer ones that I really, really enjoy watching is Rick and Morty. It's Adult Swim, so the humor is raunchy and also very deep in a very surprising way you are caught of cards so many times watching the show by having emotional uh, responses to these stupid things that are happening and these crazy characters but this show is uh, very it's a it's a well thought out show too, but it does it in a very free way, which I like. And I praise Adult Swim for allowing all these crazy things to happen in their show. Adult Swim is, to me, the kind of like a remainder of liberal entertainment and humor. It's not as commercial, but it's sometimes very, very intelligent and it's like the last place you would search for intelligent content in a way but that's how why I like it and in a way I hope that they are always gonna be like the underdog of TV channels because sometimes that's the driving force that they will remain the same way if they will stay as a rather smaller channel. Some adult swim content that I really like are those shorts. For example, the well, Too Many Cooks. Uh, it was a funny one, but kind of like drawn out but it, I, and I also know that's the joke but it didn't do it as well as I hoped it would but from the same creators I believe a film called footage of a bear a short film about a bear or something like that it's so amazing and uh, a ridiculously well thought out commentary on prescription pills and also depression and then their new magnum opus called this house has people in it and that was a that was a trip to watch you think that you're only watching like a 10 or was it 15 minute short but when then when you go to internet you start to find all these hidden sites passwords videos, YouTube videos, music, games, and text files. It 
it's like a rabbit hole like a alternative reality game in a way and I just love their hubris and how they manage to make it all and also the viewers who manage to crack all these codes I love this kind of interactive and dynamic thing and it's also the fact kind of like a psychological fact that you're doing it yourself you're thinking about it more on your own and you're finding out these answers by yourself they are not hand fed to you that's what makes it more gratifying for the viewer and that's why I love Adult Swim sometimes they are like David Lynch and they don't make sense but most of the time there is some thoughts behind it and sometimes they can be very absurd and I just love the feeling when you grasp onto an absurd idea and you at least feel like you are on the same wavelength as the creators and you feel like this is what they wanted to say with this but I think that's about it it's always fun to talk about these things that I like because that's how it is <laughs> you like to talk about things that you like that, that's what I've learned in life it's easier to do things that you are motivated to do that goes for school you want to learn stuff that you want to know about and also about work you want to work in an environment doing a thing that you like because you live here once why should you feel bad about these mundane things and these uh, ideas of doing eight hour shifts five days a week with a minimum wage if that's not what you really want in life of course I know that this sounds so new generation way of thinking that you are not grateful for what you have and it's not as easy as I make it sound here but it's also like the way things are isn't how they should be or could be even kind of like an Occam's razor there's always more to things two sides even three <laughs> so guess that's it and see you in the next video and I promise to be more active on this channel because I really like it and I'm really grateful for all these new viewers especially for my collaborations with Fairy Shaw they've been getting so many views and I like it I'm very happy about it but see you in the next one bye bye